Hello there, YouTubers. Welcome back to another episode of Board Gaming XP, the show where we talk about board games and card games that we so very much love. In this episode, we are going to talk about deck building games. And you know, I love card games, and deck building is pretty popular at these days. These five suggestions that I'm going to present today are just. Um, they're different from each other, so I'm, I'm trying to have these five to be different from one another so that each of them kind of fills in a gap of, of a specific theme. So each one of them will have different themes uh, so that you have a good selection of, of thematic experience within the deck building genre. So yeah, now that I think I've cleared the disclaimer, let's get to the list. Well, this is pretty much expected. The number one on this list is kind of the the, res the game that is responsible for making deck building such a popular thing nowadays in the industry. So, and that game is Dominion. Dominion is a deck building game that is uh, somewhat, uh, well, it, 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 it's pretty much the, the skeleton of all deck builders. And in, De in Dominion, you have, uh, I think, 10 stacks of cards on the center of table, uh, face up. Each stack of cards, each pile of cards is, 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 is face up and has uh, multiple copies of the same card. And you can buy these cards uh, with, with your starting deck. You have a starting deck of 10 cards. You have a, a bunch of, of coins and a bunch of victory points as your starting deck. You draw five cards and then you buy these cards and this card that you buy goes into your discard pile. Your hand and the whatever you used in your hand goes into your discard pile and then you draw another five cards and then pass the turn. So, and you're doing this and then when you no longer have a draw pile, you shuffle together all your discarded cards to form a new deck and then you draw five cards. So the cards that went into your discard pile, this is how the deck building works in general. The cards that went into your discard pile will eventually pop into your deck that they will eventually pop into your hand. So you can see that you start with weasley measly coins but eventually you'll start getting silvers and golds and then you can buy things that are interesting and stuff and whatnot and then eventually at the end you'll buy cards that are worth a lot of points and thus uh, making you the victor the game ends i think it's one when, when a few stacks are depleted when the, 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 the stacks on the board uh, some of them are depleted the game ends and then you will look at your deck Ignore all of the cards that don't have points and just count up the victory points and who has the most points wins So it's a pretty basic skeleton that uh, Dominion created, but it's still uh, pretty much Well one of the most successful ones because it's so simple so you can teach it to uh, Virtually anybody you can play it with your family and kids and stuff and it's a really simple thing once you get past that learning curve of the deck building system, you know buying card to discard pile to deck to hand once you explain that once players get a grasp of that concept uh, the game flows really fast and really nice you can even play it i don't know as a two player and it works nice as a two player deck building existed prior to dominion but it wasn't a, 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 be, until to the point that dominion made it a, a game on its own without anything else clogging including theme so <laughs> there's no theme in dominion so uh, yeah, they stripped it down to the bare bone. <laughs> so that's number one, Dominion. Number two on the list is a game for those that like the fantasy theme with deck building. So the game we're talking about is obviously Thunderstone Advanced. So yeah, never mind Thunderstone, never mind Towers of Whatnot and Dragon Spire and above. Forget all those versions of Thunderstone. Just go for Thunderstone Advanced, which is just like Thunderstone, but how it should have been. So it's a good version, well, it's, it's the version. The other ones are just kind of like prototypes. So Thunderstone Advanced is a, is a deck builder that you have a fantasy theme. So you are this uh, warrior, you know, that has these equipments and these uh, things and spells and whatnot and minions and things that you are uh, using to go into dungeons to fight monsters to give you points and who has points at the end of the game wins so it all comes down to the same thing 
but uh, there is a bit of a thing there. It's there's some thing there. It's I can't say it's very immersive. It's not like that. It's you're still pretty much playing Dominion with a bit of swords and, and, and monsters, uh, except that you have more icons, more different types of resources. Uh, different ways of getting points. There's the the monster trap that they will come in, uh, or they will come out of the cave of the dungeon. Uh, so you have to be, you have to have light, light as being. You have to have some form of a, of illumination of of of, of uh, such as a torch or as a lamp, so that you can fight properly in the darkness if you want to go into the darkness to fight the monsters. Or you can just wait until they are out of the dungeon. That's the concept, at least. So, and because we are pretty much racing against each other uh, to kill the best juicy monsters, so we are kind of not. We're not so very much afraid of the monsters. We're just racing to see who gets the monster first. And there's not much player interaction. There's well, there's as much player interaction in this game as it is in Dominion. So, which is close to zero. There are some cards that will screw uh, your, your players' games, but you know, generally, if you just stick to your thing and optimize your, your game, that's normally the best way to play it, so yeah. Uh, not much I can say. Thunderstone Advanced, a uh, deck building game with a fantasy, with a bit of fantasy theme. Next on the list is a, a weird theme, but a really solid game, and that game is Blood Bowl. Blood Bowl, the, the card game. So Blood Bowl is, uh, how should I explain this? So you take Super Bowl and then you add fantasy, that's Blood Bowl. So it's it's like orcs and elves playing uh, playing uh, f f American football um, but, but with spells and swords and, and things and and with a lot of you know a very bloody scenario so it, it's not a sportive thing you, you might think oh with the sports it's not sports it's much more about battle than actually the sport itself but uh, it's it's a, it's a very popular thing that's been around for quite a while it had a miniature version an RPG for no I don't think an RPG but it had a lot of content much uh, earlier than this uh, deck building version which is a very small cheap actually a version to buy uh, that you can play the, 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 the this this variant of blood bowl so what what you are controlling is a faction uh, either orcs or elves or something and your you have your set of cards that you start and you have these uh, games that are going on and you're trying to win the games and the games are basically just a card in the middle with a football and you want to get the football on your side that means that you're winning that game so that's kind of the thing and that will give you victory points and then you can recruit other other uh, stars or the soccer star or the football stars um, to, to your team so you can increase your team and so it works with the deck building mechanic but a, a, a very much fun uh, uh, theme a funny theme if you will and it, it's very fast and it plays a, a decent number of players so it's it's a good it's a good deck building that you want to play with a, with a different theme that is not necessarily your, your typical theme so that's Blood Bowl the card game next up on the list is uh, deck building game that uh, has a sci-fi theme well not necessarily a lot of it but it has a bit of it and that game is eminent domain eminent domain is probably one of the, the deck buildings out there that is uh, I think the most uh, pure in a sense that it's so neatly designed in its components I know some of the versions come with these plastic miniatures that are basically that could be basically just anything else, but it's cool to have these little ships that work as just a marker. But uh, the game is really simple. You have these this line of, of I think five stacks in the middle, which are always the same, and they will have these abilities, and you will have your starting hand again, your starting deck, and you will be acquiring these cards. Uh, in your in your turn, you play one card, have a, have an action, and you get one of the cards in the middle. The, the the cards in the middle, all of them have these two options. They have an option as an action card, when you play them from your hand, 
and you have an option when you get them out of a stack into your deck, into your discard pile. They will do something else, which is similar to the action, but it's something else. And that, at that point, will allow you to discard the cards that have the same icon to boost up that action. For instance, if you're searching at, uh, 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 the deck of planets to get new planets, uh, you, can, you can do that, discard more cards to get that action uh, boosted on, and then other players can do the same thing. So yeah, I'm kind of messing up the explanation. What you are doing is basically you're getting cards to get planets that will get you victory points. So uh, it, there's, there's something there, you're trying to conquer planets or colonize planets. Some planets will be more uh, easy to gain through one means or the other. And the planets themselves will generate resources and points and all that things. And then you can get technologies that are sort of better versions of the, of the, of the cards at the center of the table. So that's pretty much the game. It revolves around these cards and the stack of, of, of planets that, you, that you're going for. And that's the game. That's essentially the game. The fun thing and uh, the thing that I think that makes this, this game stand out is the fact that you have so many options within a card. A card can be used for so many different things. You can use it as, as a boost, just using its icons to boost other card uh, when you pull a card from the center of the table. Or you can use it as an action when you do it, when you play it from your hand. Or you can, uh, you can, when you pull it from from the stack of cards to get it to get it to your to your deck. So it has it has these three options that a card can do. So that's really interesting. And and the fact that when you pull a card from the from the the stacks, other players can can follow up and and do that action uh, with not as much benefit as the player whose turn it is. But the fact that that's uh, involved, so players are always engaged uh, in every single turn, you have to sort of like take advantage of the things that you know that other players will want to play so that you play something that you know other players won't play. And then when they play that thing that you wanted to do as well, you go with them and do it uh, along with them. So you sort of maximize your plays off your turn so when it's not your turn so that's that's an interesting thing that's why I, I think eminent domain is one of the most elegant deck builders with a bit of sci-fi theme not too much not uh, just a, just a tinge but uh, enough to be to be interesting so yeah eminent domain that's the third on the list no that's the no that's the fourth on the list eminent domain and finally last but not least, certainly not least, is the fifth game on this list. And that game, that deck building game, is Legendary Encounters. Legendary Encounters is, I think, the best deck building game out there. Certainly it's the most thematic one, but I feel it's, it's pretty much the best in all uh, in, in, in all aspects of it, but definitely for for a sure thing the best thematic deck building game out there. So what is Legendary Encounters? It's a well, it's the legendary uh, core system which is uh, which was developed in the, its pre, in its first version as Legendary Marvel thingy. I don't know the name, but it's but with Marvel heroes. So and that and that was a really cool thing for those that enjoy comic books and stuff. That was a really cool thing, you know. You had Wolverine and Spider-Man and all that stuff. Really cool thing. And the the engine itself was really cool. But this game just takes it to a thematic level that is so much more deep and so much more immersive. Immersive. It has the aliens, alien alien being the movies, aliens the movies, you know, with the creatures and the mobs it has that theme and you can play the movies just as they are you know it's it's a really awesome thing and you can just play through each movie with the characters and with the events and all of it feels just right and it's awesome and they even throw in a couple of variants that you can play with a trader 
or a, a variant where you, when you die, oh, because you die in this game, and it's really awesome because you can get a, 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 a face hugger in your face, and will that that will that might impregnate you, and guess what? You just might blah, die, and and because an alien is popping off your chest, so that that's that's bad. And so, yeah, you die sometimes and you hope that your friends will, you know, avenge you in something or, or, or survive or, or, you, or maybe not. Maybe just want them to die so that you can play it again. But it has a variant that you can, you know, you can play as an alien. So as you die, you, you, you turn tables and go to the other side and, and try to kill your friends. So it has that variant. It has so much replay value. It's ridiculous. There's the scenario, which is the location that you're playing, and each location will come with three um, objectives that you need to reach in order. And you can change the, those up constantly. You can change the scenarios, you can change one of the roles, you can change whatnot. Or you can actually set up a movie. You choose the, ch the scenario of the movie, you choose the objectives that correspond with the, the events in the movie, you choose the characters, the, the, the heroes that, that were in that movie and start the, the pile of, of those heroes and you choose the... and each each uh, objective will, will get the bad guys. So, and how does it work? It's, it's, a, it's a game where you have the, the hero piles, the, the things that go into your deck, it's a deck builder, are, are mixed together, are shuffled together in just one pile. And then you pull up five cards from the top of that. So that's the, the options. You always have five options to get into your deck. So the deck building works like that. There's no stacks of piles wandering about. You just pull five cards from the total of the cards. And and they go, they go, they go. So you always have five options to pull. And then there's the, the monsters. The monsters will be stacked in an order from the lowest to the highest. So the, the first event will pull crappy monsters and then the, the second uh, objective or uh, thing that you're going for will, co will pull higher, strong, stronger monsters, stronger events and stuff and so forth until the end. And that scales really well. And as they come out, they come out similar to, to Thunderstone, but they come out in a line that Can, uh, pushes them uh, further away from the deck until they reach you, until they reach the zone where the players are sort of like hiding or, or setting up camp. And uh, they come face down, which is really interesting. So you don't know what's coming. You can see them approaching. It has that feel of the movies where you're hearing the, 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 sun, the alarm just uh, ticking off and just going crazy. So you see them coming closer, but they're all face down. You don't know what's coming, and you can spend cards to scan the area. But as 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 farther they are, the harder the harder it is to scan. So and so normally they just you just get the chance to see them when they're in your face. So and, and so you kill monsters and you get uh, better stuff for your deck. Kill monsters. Uh, things happen. Different events happen that just really work and just make you feel like you're there, like you're in the movie. There's that constant feeling of, of loneliness and, 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 and claustrophobia and, and we're doomed sort of feeling, which is great. So it has a bit of horror, that sci-fi horror that we so much love from the movies. And so in the game, you know, and, and when you get wounded, bad stuff happens, you can get a face hugger in your face and then you can go just die and throw out a, a, an alien. That's just a, a wonderful game. So uh, I can't, uh, I really need to, to pull this one uh, apart from the other ones because this one really has that thematic, thematic experience and th this show is about the theme. So. This one just shines and outshines all of the others, uh, all of the other deck builders, as being a really, truly thematic experience. So, yeah, really recommend Legendary Encounters Aliens in a Deck Building version. So, and that's our final suggestion, and I hope you enjoy this video. I'll see you in the next episode. Goodbye. <laughs>